Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're doing another video on footer. Uh, I've done some videos in the past, so I'm not going to dive too deep into what it is, but basically, essentially, it's a desktop on the cloud in your browser. I'll link that in the description below, just check that out if you want to understand more of what it is, features, how-to kind of thing. Um, yeah, basically what happened here in why I'm doing this video as a follow-up is they just made this open source. Um, so obviously this will be in the description below, a link uh, to this. And, you know, here's all the file things. So fork away. It's pretty cool. And it's funny because I, I noticed that my previous video about this suddenly had a skyrocket in views. That's how I found out that it went open source, which is pretty cool just because, you know, a lot of people, they want to have more control. Maybe they want to adapt it to meet business needs or personal use. Uh, this is where we're going to go. Now, the first thing you do want to do before you do this, um, there's a few ways to launch this and host it, but uh, Docker uh, Desktop is the one I went with. Uh, here's this. Uh, if you guys want to see me uh, how to install this and maybe play around with it in a video, let me know in the comments below or like this video. I'll probably do a follow-up, but uh, there's plenty of videos out there. So just uh, get Docker, set it up. You will have to restart your computer after the install for it to finish up a few things. But it's really good for hosting uh, stuff like this. So there is this version, which as you see, there's like, you know, a Docker file here. Um, so that's what it is. Now you can download it uh, through here um, using you know the drop down and saying download the zip. The easiest way I found is that we're just going to open command prompt uh, right here. And then down if you scroll, um, you actually have this one here for using Docker. And so you can just copy and paste this stuff over real easily. So git. That's another thing you got to make sure you have. Just Google how to download Git. Once again, if you want to see a video on that, let me know. Uh, but yeah, download. Uh, so pre, before you do all this, make sure you have uh, Git and Docker installed on your computer. Um, so yeah, you're just going to copy and paste Git clone. It's going to have uh, the URL, which is just the URL up here. It's going to automatically grab that information, put it into your uh, hard drive uh, where it goes. I've already done that, so I'm not going to really show you that. Um, I mean, I can. Uh, it's probably just going to tell me that it's already there. So I paste it in. I push uh, enter. Yeah, destination path already exists. So it's already installed. Uh, but then what you're going to want to do is cd, which is uh, going to change the directory uh, to that folder. So we do that. As you see now, it's pointing to that folder. And then we're going to do um, docker compose up. So we're going to do that, press enter, and this might take a few uh, moments for that, but yeah, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm always throwing videos out there, usually doing with auto hotkeys and automation, and this is going to work. And the whole point of this is really to launch your own server within uh, like your own network. You can make it go outside your network, uh, but today we're just going to be testing it out on my network. So let me actually show you something real quick. Um, I have another computer here, and hopefully this shows up. Okay, not very well, but as you can see, um, it's not working right now. And it's because I don't have it launched or anything like that. So we're just going to take a quick break here on the video. I'm going to pause it. I don't know why it's taking uh, so long. I'll be right back. All right, so I am getting an error here, and that's just because I've already had all this set up. Uh, for you, it should launch. Uh, eventually, it will show you saying, hey, that everything went through fine. It's running at this uh, server port, um, which is 4,000 by default, or just finds whatever the next one available is. Uh, so with that, you are going to need to do uh, port forwarding if you want to access it from multiple computers within your network. Um, so you're just going to log in using your router. Um, for me, I just type in 192.168.1.1 enter my password username which should be on your router and what you do is you're gonna select IP and every router is different so this is just how mine looks but it should be pretty easy but you're gonna look for this right here that says port forwarding and as you see I made a rule here that uh, forwards to this computer's IP where I'm running the server and the destination port is 4000 that's basically saying anytime I type in 4000 as the port 
connect here to uh, this computer. Um, so what we'll do then is type in localhost, the little uh, colons there from like what you see on a clock, 4000. We're going to push enter. Now it's not working. Why is that? Well, that's because I haven't actually ran it. So as you see, the status is exit. So right here, there's a little play button. Now with the commands like I showed you here, you're only going to have to do that one time. After that, you can just launch uh, Docker and everything will already be here ready. And all we're going to do is push start. And it's basically going to go ahead and do whatever it needs to do in the background. This can just take a few seconds. As you see, it's now running. So we're good. And uh, you can get some information on here. Like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into this uh, program. If you want to hit the like button, I will jump back to it at some point. But you can, you know, go in and see uh, a lot more information on, like, you know, what's going on in the server uh, stuff. It's lagging a little bit because I'm recording right now, and that takes up a lot of power. So there you go. You can see, uh, like right here, it says Putter is now live at this host number. So now that it's running, we're going to push refresh. It's taking a second there. And there we go. Uh, it was taking a few extra seconds there just because I didn't realize that the server was still launching a little bit slower. Uh, but yeah, there isn't the desktop now. So as you see, um, you know, you can log in. You got all your apps down here, um, you know, notepad, whatnot. Like I said, watch that first video. It explains a little bit more. But yeah, so if you're going to uh, run this locally just on this computer, you're fine just launching Docker and running it that way and not having to do the port forwarding. But, like I showed you on this computer, I'm going to go ahead and push refresh after I do that port forwarding. And that rule stays there forever unless your IP address on your computer changes for some reason. Obviously, you would have to just update that. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. You know, I can use this to basically be on one computer, move to another computer, still have this desktop. I actually found this very interesting to use with uh, touchscreen computers that I have or tablets because then I can have my data kind of follow me a little bit better, very simply throughout the whole house, uh, which is really nice, it's super helpful. Uh, what do you guys think you're gonna use this for? Um, and then maybe I'll do another video following up on how to access this outside of your network. Um, but keeping it inside your network obviously is gonna be a little bit safer and easier. Um, also, if you want in the description below, I have a referral link. If you haven't done this yet, it says right here, get one gigabyte for every friend who creates and confirms an account with Twitter. Your friend will also get one gigabyte, so a storage. Um, yes, use that link and uh, okay, let's uh, get some free storage because one gigabyte's a lot, especially seeing that you only start with a, I think it's 500 megabytes. So that's, you know, pretty sweet deal there. All right. And there we go. And now I have accessed it on this computer. So yeah, it works pretty well. Obviously, it's only just now kind of gone live in the last few days at the time of filming this video. Uh, so for support, you know, maybe you want someone to test one of your apps out, have questions, you're having issues with this, um, you know, anything like that. There is a Reddit group, uh, which is great. You know, it doesn't have a lot of members in it. Uh, it can be slow just because it is, you know, Reddit. Not everybody's on there all day or has it on their phone. What I find the best way to do is actually Discord is probably by far the best. You know, there's a decent amount of people in here. It seems to be growing pretty quick uh, as a community. And, yeah, I mean, people are really great. There's a report of bug. And so far, at least... You know, I don't know what time zone they are, but the creators of this who are and the moderators, uh, you know, if it's the time when they're awake, it's crazy how fast they're responding to me. I've had these people respond to me, I mean, within like five minutes, tell them my problem, and then like the one problem I was having, they had it fixed in less than 10 minutes. It was crazy, and like everything just worked. So this is a great place to go for resources. There's a lot to do there. So Discord, by far, I think is the best as of filming this video. Reddit's all right, but this is awesome. This is great. All right, if you guys have any questions, run into any issues, you know, let me know in the comments below if you find a solution to some weird thing you're doing. 
uh, definitely share that too. That way we can all grow as a community. All right, everybody. Hope this helps. Hope you get it live as easily as I did. But hey, who knows? Computers are computers. Let me know and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.